Hello, Aero Engineering team. This is our 1.0 liter Suzuki engine, actually 993 cubic centimeters, rounded up to 1.0 liter. And we intend to use this engine in our airplane. This is the one that was not locked up, the one we did not overhaul. Okay, what you see is what I got when I bought it on Craigslist. Didn't get the rest of the car or the computer that tells everything what to do. So what we have to do is figure out how to take the signal from this distributor, from the sensor inside this distributor. They call it a camshaft position sensor. And as you can see, the shaft of this distributor is straight in line with the camshaft, which is here in the head. See, there's the valve cover. The head has the exhaust manifold on one side, intake manifold on the other, valves in there. That cam spins around in there. Well, this sensor inside here is the camshaft position sensor. From what I can gather, there are two kinds of electronic pickups inside a distributor for the ignition system of an engine with an electronic ignition. You have a variable reluctor type, and you also have the Hall effect transistor type. I'm pretty sure this is a variable reluctor. If you put a voltmeter on the two wires that come out of this distributor right there, you'll get a certain resistance regardless of how you hook up the wires. So what that says to me is that there's a coil inside there, and if you take the cap off, you'll see a sensor that has three pieces of metal that swing around near it and the voltage varies in that loop of wire when the metal comes and goes. This MSD ignition is supposed to be able to sense that variable reluctance and turn its sine wave into a square wave and that is used to trigger the primary side of this coil. See this is a, they call it a coil, it came from my Jeep Cherokee, but it's actually a transformer. It's two coils in one. It has a primary coil. See these two wires, this one and this one, they're actually two ends of the same wire that goes in and loops around several times around ferromagnetic material. And this high voltage wire looks like it all fit a spark plug. It's one of the wires of the secondary coil. So you have electricity going through the primary side of the coil and then when that electricity quits flowing you have a high voltage induced in the secondary side of the coil which goes off and fires the plug. So this wire should be going up to the middle terminal of this distributor and whatever rotor, whatever wire of these three wires here this rotor happens to be pointing at, that's the one that'll get the high voltage spark from this one. But we've got this wire coming out of here going to a spark plug on the other side of the engine and clamped to the block so it'll be sparking three times as often. It'll spark three times for every two revolutions of the engine. So one and a half sparks per revolution is what we ought to see. Here are a couple of HEI modules, high energy ignition modules. This is a four pin module, this is a seven pin module. I tried this one, I couldn't get it to induce a spark. I haven't tried that one yet. We'll see how it does later. But let's see how this MSD ignition does. We'll go around to the other side of the engine now. Before we go to the other side, let's talk about the wires on this MSD ignition. Okay, here's a wire that's not being used. It says, triggered by points if used. Don't use this wire with pickup coil and distributor. Okay, if you have an old-timey engine with points, you can still use those points to trigger this. But this is an engine with an electronic pickup, so that one does not get used. We have two wires here coming out that go to the primary side of the coil, one there and one coming around 
over to here. Okay. We have a couple of wires from here that go to the pickup. They go up here and into the pickup inside this distributor. And we have power wires, one to the positive side of the battery, one to the negative side of the battery. We have one more wire over there, which when hooked to the positive side of the battery, well, it's hooked by the switch. When the ignition system is on, then it's connected to the positive. This one's connected to the positive all the time. Now we're on the other side of the engine. As you can see, I cut off part of the housing from the transmission, just enough to be able to bolt the starter up. I've got the two wires from the battery going over to here. See this wire coming out of the, the ignition. I've got it going up to a spark plug here, which is clamped to a piece of metal bolted onto the block. That way we can sit here and watch it spark. So, whenever I hook this up to the hot wire, this is the hot side of the battery, that's like turning the key to the first notch. So we'll do that. And when I touch this to it, that's like turning the key one more notch and making the engine turn. So hold on your hat. Here we go. Let's see if this spark plug will spark. Where is the spark plug? Yep, it sparked. Of course the engine jumps around, it's hanging from ropes. So now that we've figured out how to get the spark plugs to spark, our next task is to figure out how to get gas and air to go down that hole. I've got some old carburetors laying around. That shouldn't be too hard to figure out. 